What's up guys, today I'm going to go through some editing tips when using transition plugins within Final Cut Pro. So the first tip is how to set the default length of the transition. So if we go up here to Final Cut Pro and then go to Preferences and then go to Editing, down here we have Durations. If we go down to Transition, it will probably be at one second. I like to set the duration to two seconds just because I find that I use transitions around like two to three seconds mostly. So it's just quite a useful thing to know that you can set this to whatever number you want. And then every time you drag a transition on, the default length will be whatever seconds that you set it to. To find the transitions, they will be over here on the right hand side under this tr little transition icon. And then once you click that, you'll have all these transitions. You can find a lot of free transitions on my website and also a lot of extra packs. And the link to that is in the description if you want to check it out. So there's two ways that I like to edit whilst using transitions. And if I'm just using the odd one, then the best way to do it is just to stick two video clips together that you want to transition. Click on the inside of one of the video clips and then go over to the transitions and just double click on a transition that you want to use and that will automatically add the transition in between the two video clips. The second way that I like to add transitions is when I know I'm going to be adding a lot of transitions in a row and it's going to get more complex so what I like to do is let's delete this and I just like to drag the second video clip above the first one that I'm transitioning from and then click on the inside of the top video clip, double click the transition and you'll see that it gives the exact same effect. But now what I can do is drag in another video clip, put that on top and add another transition to this. And then using this technique, what you can do is overlap the transitions to get a fast paced transition effect. By making them shorter or longer, it will change the speed of the transition. If you end up starting to edit like this with the transitions layered, it sometimes gets hard to see what you're editing. So another great tip is to go over here to this little video roll tab and you can change the size of your video clips in the timeline. So if you have a load of video clips stacked up on top of each other, you can just make them all really small and it just makes it a lot easier to see your different layers. So now I'm going to go into a couple of extra plugins that I like to use when editing with transitions. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to my titles tab up here and then go to motion blur. This is a free plugin. You can download it. I'll leave the link in the description. And if I drag this over my transitions. So now if I turn this on and off, you can see that it adds a really nice natural motion blur. So if you find some transitions don't come with like blur built in, then it's a really useful plugin to use. I always use moderate motion blur too from the download link in the description. It will make video rendering a lot slower. So bear that in mind, it's something to add at the end of an edit. Another alternative to this is a great plugin I've just started using uh, that they just updated, I think last year. Uh, called RSMB. So to add that, what I like to do is use an adjustment layer and adjustment layers don't come with Final Cut Pro, but I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's a free download and it basically just allows you to add effects to multiple video clips in the timeline. So once I've added the adjustment layer, I'm going to go over to my effects tab and find this plugin called RSMB. I'll leave the link to it in the description. But basically what this does is adds a really cool motion blur. As you can see, if I turn this on and off, 
it adds a super cool motion blur that you won't get with any other plugin. And it also fixes motion blur on video clips that you haven't used the right shutter speed. It just gives a really nice natural cinematic motion blur I find. And I also like to keep the use GPU acceleration ticked. It just seems to work a bit better for rendering. So another tip when using the transitions, by making them shorter or longer, it will change the speed of the transition. So now I'm gonna bring in a title and show you how you can use transitions to animate titles. So here I have this title and what I can do is select it, go to my transitions and I can actually add transitions to animate the title on and off the screen. So I'm gonna add this black and white glitch effect. And you'll see when I add it, at the moment it affects the title and the video clip. So if you want it to just affect the title, then what you can do is select the transitions and the title, right click and go to new compound clip. So now when I play it back, it only affects the title and not the video clip behind it. This compound clip technique also works with video clips. Editing with transitions and effects can really slow down your computer. So I'm just gonna give a few little tips on what settings to use. So the first thing that I like to do if my computer is struggling, I'll go up here to the view window and make sure better performance is ticked. I'm actually using proxy files at the moment. If I switch it back to, if I'm using the original footage, then make sure that under quality, the better performance is ticked. If your computer is still struggling, then what you can do is click proxy only and change your video clips into proxy files by right clicking them, reveal in browser, right click on the video clip that you want to change into a proxy file, go to transcode media and then hit create proxy media and select okay. I've already done it to this video clip so it won't actually let me um, do that. And then uh, editing should be a lot faster. Another tip is to edit in 1080p instead of 4K. And this really speeds up the editing process as well. If you are in a 4K project, then you can easily change it to 1080p when editing. And then before you export it, if you want it in 4K, you can change it back. So to do that, what you do is press Command J on the keyboard and the project settings should pop up here on the right hand side. And if you click modify, then we can click on the video and you can change that to whatever you want whilst editing. So it's a good idea to edit in 1080p or a lower resolution, and then you can switch it back to 4K before exporting the project. Another tip for faster editing is to make sure that your video is stored on a, a high quality fast hard drive or SSD or on the computer itself. It'll make a big difference compared to editing on like a cheap quality hard drive or something similar like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. All the links will be in the description for the plugins that I've used. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.